Hello, everybody. You're listening to Accounting Makes Sense, an MJ the Tutor podcast, and I am your host, MJ. In this podcast, we are focused on helping accounting students all over the world by offering a quick warm up on various accounting and business topics, hoping to generate bigger discussions and conversations around them. If you are currently a SEMA case study student, then this episode is for you. For this episode, we're going to follow the same format we had as the last episode of the podcast, wherein I offered some initial thoughts or tidbits, as I called them, on the pre-seen material. I'm starting some sort of tradition here with the podcast, hoping to be able to drop these thoughts every time a new pre-scene comes out. So since we did the management case study last time, this time, we're going to be doing the strategic case study pre-scene, the SCS for May 2022. The pre-scene has already been out for some time, I'd say about a week or so. I hope you have all had the chance to read through it yourself, gather some of your own thoughts, and are now wanting to see whether the important parts that you've picked up from the pre-scene are going to be part of today's tidbits from the pre-scene. Of course, the disclaimer is that these thoughts are merely opinions. Whatever we discuss or point out for today does not mean that it's going to be at the exams. But in general, these points are just to highlight important factors to consider. The opinions here are neither wrong nor right. Please take this opportunity as a chance for you to confirm certain factors you may have thought about yourself or at least enlighten you on topics you may not have thought about before. Anyway, we're going to focus on the May 2022 SES pre-scene today. As mentioned, I'm going to offer four tidbits. Take these as clues into the world of the pre-scene company. A backgrounder is to introduce the pre-scene company. So here we go. Our pre-scene company for this session is a company called Snack Wheel. It is a quoted company based in the fictitious country called Westaria. This company facilitates home deliveries on behalf of fast food companies across Westaria. Sounds familiar? I hope this pre-scene company is giving you loads of Uber Eats or DoorDash vibes. There are, of course, a lot of other companies as well that is in the same space. But in general, these are apps or websites that allow customers to place orders of fast food. And then the app website acts as the gateway that matches the order with the delivery driver. Anyway, let's start with the tidbits. I'd forewarn that the first two tidbits center around things that are vital to the snack wheel business strategy. The two that I'm talking about uh, are people and systems, in case you have not sensed it yet. These are the backbone of snack wheel. The first tidbit to share is the importance of stakeholders in this business, specifically the employees that are employed as couriers and independent contractors that also act as such. While there seems to be a small snippet of mention with regards to employees having rights and protection afforded by employment law and all the benefits that go with it, it must be noted that there was barely a mention of this on the independent contractor side. They do mention that it's different, but that's about it. Try and imagine this as per real world companies. If you remember a few years back, There was a big ruckus with regards to the drivers being employed by Uber as independent contractors and whether they should in fact be classified as employees. Further down some pages on the pre-scene, you'll note that compensation and pay with regards to couriers are mentioned. The information stated that couriers were in general not well paid but make the most of their monies through gratuities. When we look at the amount of time that is used to become a courier, it is sometimes a hit or miss. Think about it. If you are lucky enough to be on shift when it is busy, then you earn a lot, mostly because of the trips that you make and the gratuities that you get. But if you are unlucky to be assigned a shift where no one seems to be ordering, then the whole exercise seems unproductive. 
not to mention unprofitable for couriers. So I believe that this topic of motivating by money and other financial benefits versus getting the most performance out of the couriers will be a challenging one. Snackwill doesn't really seem to be too empathetic towards its employees. All it says is that their mission is that they provide employment, which could easily also be seen as Snackwill gives the job opportunities and there are many people looking for work, so you take it or leave it. Yes, again, this is not what it directly says, but really very heavily implied in those pages. The next tidbit to share is the IT system. Now, the platform runs on technology, software, and hardware. The information is exchanged and stored within this platform. We could basically touch on topics like cybersecurity, threats, privacy, and information security, etc. The failure of the platform is crucial, that it has several repercussions if it does happen. Think about it when the whole thing goes down and snack will relies on this heavily be it for the couriers or the orders being placed with the restaurants or the interaction with the customers and everything else actually the it system factor highlights two mini tidbits one is the maintenance and upkeep of such a system to ensure that it never goes down or that it's always up all the time And it might be a little unrealistic to just go and think that it will never, ever, ever go down. But there is also the flip side of it to say that, well, if it does go down, there is a fail-safe plan that Snackwheel has put into place of what needs to be done to ensure it doesn't shut everything down, that you still have some sort of backup running. There is extensive information about who owns the software being used, who develops it, uh, who maintains the software, who maintains the hardware, Who, where the data is stored, how the data is stored, what kind of information is currently being held, etc. Many, many pages concerning this. IT is really an important part of this pre-scene company. The second mini tidbit is the mitigation of cyber risk and threats. Sure, it's always best to prevent bad things from happening, But what if it does happen is the question that we need to ask. I like that there is a CIO involved in all of this, which has been seriously lacking in most recent pre-scenes. If you don't know what a CIO does, well, then a CIO is a company executive responsible for the management, implementation, and usability of information data, as well as computer and technologies. Technology is becoming a heavily tested topic on the case study. And we know that this is true in real life as well. Technology advancements have been disrupting many industries. And the existence of a CIO on the pre-scene highlights how important technology is for Snackwheel. At the exams, it will be highly likely that you will get a question with regards to Snackwheel's digital strategy, uh, cyber threats perhaps, or cyber security happening, and some mitigation steps to be asked of you. Uh, You may also be asked about information flow through the system and how it goes through all these points. You know, you think about it uh, from the point of view that uh, the information is coming from the customer, going to the restaurant, then going to the couriers, and then it's on the server. Now, you do not really need to be an IT expert to be able to answer questions about the system. You will need to understand how the data flows, though. It the, with the pre-seen material that's been provided. And of course, there's lots of information there, as mentioned. You'll have to see how data is handled, how it is safeguarded within the company, so you can answer questions about control, access, and transparency if need be. The last tidbit to share is understanding the pressures on the industry and trends. This is a highly digital and constantly changing industry. Something briefly mentioned is that when Snackwill was first established, it disrupted the home delivery industry. Disruption is the key word here used when a company shakes everything up the way that it has always been done before. There's almost that feeling of almost failing before it actually comes right. So with Snackwill, it created something new using digital technology and resources. And then 
I'd like to borrow a phrase from Star Trek. By using digital technology and resources, Snack Will was able to go where no one has gone before. I do feel that this whole feeling of disruption will continue on at the exams. There'll be questions likely regarding some disruptor or other, and we may need to determine whether this is the right direction or fit for Snack Will or not. And that's it for this episode. I hope you were able to glean the same tidbits from the pre-scene as I did, maybe even more. Keep on reading that pre-scene to gain a better understanding of the scenario. As always, I thank you for listening to Accounting Makes Sense. I'm your host, MJ the Tutor. If you're keen to connect to be updated with the arrival of the next episode of this podcast or find SEMA resources online, please head on over to my website, www.mjthetutor.com. You can also hit subscribe on whichever platform you are using to listen to this podcast. If you want to connect on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the name MJ the Tutor. So I hope to see you again next time. Ciao for now!